In this tutorial, we'll cover the make slippery chicken function, including the ensemble, set palette, set map, rhythm seek palette, and rhythm seek map slots, and the MIDI play, CMN display, and write LP data for all methods. The minimum parameters for a slippery chicken object are the ensemble, where we define the players and assign them instruments and MIDI channels, the set palette, where we define sets of pitches to be used in the piece, the set map, where we define the order in which those sets occur. The rhythm seek palette, where we define rhythm sequences with their associated pitch curves and marks. And the rhythm seek map, where we define the order in which those rhythm sequences occur. Once this is all set up, we can call one or more output methods to generate the output files of our composition. Example 1 is what we might call a declarative approach to using Slippery Chicken, where all of the data is hand-coded. We see here the Make Slippery Chicken function being called, with the first argument being mini. This will be the global parameter which we'll then be able to access once the function has returned. The ensemble slot is a simple one instrument ensemble with a player which we will call VN. This player will play the violin on MIDI channel 1. The set palette slot also has only one set, which we will call 1. And this has the notes C4, E4, and G4. This would be the C major triad in the middle octave. The set map in this very, very simple example is also just a call to one set for the whole piece, and that will of course be set one, as that's the only set we have available to us. The rhythm seek palette likewise has only one seek rhythm sequence, and this is a 2 4 bar, as we can see with the 2 4 in parentheses, and then the rhythms Q, E, S, and S. The Q stands for a quarter note, the E for an eighth note, the S in parentheses represents a 16th note rest, and the following S is a 16th note played. This rhythm sequence has one pitch sequence in its palette, and it's identified by the numbers 1, 2, and 3 to represent those three sounding notes. The rhythm seek map then simply maps the rhythm sequence 1 onto the violin. This is the very simplest example we can imagine, but it will produce a whole piece so that when we call the MIDI play method with the mini object as its argument, it will write a MIDI file with those notes that are in the score. The CMN display method also with the mini object passed to it will write that score with the appropriate notes. If we don't like CMN's output for the score, we can use LilyPond and we can generate the input files for LilyPond by calling the write LP data for all again with the mini object as its single argument. Our second example will extend the very simple first example and give us a first taste of true algorithmic music generation. We can see in our let here that we're declaring a variable random12 which is going to be a list of 30 items and these 30 items will be random numbers either 1 or 2 but in a random order of course. The second variable in the let declaration is our mini, and this is a call to the make slippery chicken function. So we'll get a slippery chicken object stored in our mini variable here. This is pretty much the same as the previous example, but we have 
a couple of differences here. First of all, both the set palette and the rhythm seek palette have two items in them now, not just one. So for instance, you can see the C major triad in the set palette as our item one, but as item two, we've got a totally different chord in there, which is based on a B major triad with an extra E sharp in there. Similarly, the Rhythm Seek palette has the 2-4 bar that we had in our first example, but we also have a second rhythm sequence in there, which consists of four 16th notes, then an 8th note and two 16th notes. And this one, interestingly, has two pitch sequences in its pitch sequence palette. So these will be alternated to produce different pitch curves when that rhythm sequence is selected. The interesting thing happens when we get to the set map and the rhythm seek map. This is where our random number list is used. We're actually going to use the random ones and twos as our set map to choose randomly between the first and the second set. Similarly, with the rhythm seek map, we choose between rhythm seeks one and two by using exactly the same list. This means that there will be a correlation between the rhythm sequence selected and the set which is selected. So that every time set one is selected, it will be matched by rhythm sequence one. And similarly for rhythm sequence two, which will always be mapped to set number two. Once this structure is established and the slippery chicken object is created, we can call our MIDI play, CMN display, and write LP data for all methods as before to generate the scores and the MIDI file, which we can now listen to and look at.